What's up, guys? Welcome back. It's Kenya with BK Forex Academy. And in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about three steps on how to buy and sell specifically in the foreign exchange market. So whether if you're a new or struggling trader, this is going to be very helpful for you. Before we get into the video, do me a favor and smash the like button on this video. Make sure you subscribe and also turn on notifications. And let's go ahead and hop right in. All right, guys, so the very first thing you want to do before you actually buy and sell into the market, I'm not going to actually go over opening an account, choosing a broker. There's other videos on our channel for that, but I'm going to go through three steps based on my experience. I've been trading the markets for years and I've become a consistently profitable trader. I prove that day in and day out. If you follow our telegram, which is linked in the description, we provide our trades all the time and people comment. A lot of you are making profit from them and we do have some losses too. It's not always every day is a winning day right we have to also realize that we win some we lose some however three steps on buying and selling are going to help you and i guarantee you that if you implement these things into your trading it's going to improve your outcome so number one before you buy and sell into the market i want you to ask yourself every single time am i getting a great deal whether if i take a counter trend trade or i'm trading a trending structure or a trending market am i getting a good deal so for example i'm going to point out to you one of the trades that i actually took recently and called for our academy students it was on nzd cad we had another great one on euro usd as well but i'm going to go over nzd cad with you you can see i'm on the daily and this trade is already marked up let's go out to the weekly and i'm just going to explain to you my analysis now we trade a very specific strategy that calls for certain rules as to why we would enter a particular trade like this so as you can see on the weekly we are heavily bearish the market actually came into a previous support structure that was last tested back in 2020 okay so march of 2020 so considering that it's two years later over two years later i wanted to see how the market would react once it came back to this area so this would be a counter trend trade however i'm looking at certain things so i'm looking at patterns i'm looking at you might use a candlestick formation but basically i am a supply and demand trader we trade supply and demand here at the academy we also have a very popular swing strategy called b swing that a lot of you are familiar with but more than anything whether if i'm trading b swing or kiss which is a very popular strategy with us I want to know that I'm getting a great deal. I'm looking at this price structure on the right to determine is this at a good price. So just like when you go to the store every day, you're only going to pay a certain amount for food that you buy, right? If it's too expensive, then you're not going to buy it. But if it's on sale, then yeah, you're interested. You're going to buy it because you're getting a great deal. That's how I look at the Forex market when I trade or any market. This is how I look at the market. And in my opinion, this is an absolute good price on NZD CAD. Now let's go out to the monthly and we can see here that exactly where the price is and look where the last few times when the price came here, look how much it went up. So on the monthly, could we continue to see more decline? Absolutely, but I'm not position trading. I am only scalping or swing trading. In this case, I'm going over a swing trade with you. So every time you press that buy and sell button, you really need to be asking yourself, is, is it ideal that you know I buy or I sell here? Am I buying too high or am I selling too low? I always want you to get in the habit of asking yourself that. And knowing if you are or not is really going to come down to your experience in trading. This is where I always recommend getting really good mentorship, education, and training. If you're doing it on your own, just understand it's going to take you a lot longer, and that's okay. Some people can't afford education and training, but if you can, I highly recommend that you get some mentorship, a quality program, and that's going to help you accelerate faster, okay? So that's the first thing you're going to do. Second, once you determine if you're going to buy and sell, so let's say, for example, that I decide that I'm going to get long on NZD CAD because I believe it's going to reverse from this area. The, very, the second thing, after you hit that buy and sell button or before actually you get into the trade, you need to know what confirmation do you have. So when traders come to me and say, hey, Kenya, hey, Brian, Ryan, I have this good trade idea. Do you think I should get into this trade? Or they'll say, hey, I see a setup on KISS or B-Swing or a price action channel strategy. Do you think I should get in? I always like to ask traders, 
what's your logic? What is your thinking behind the reasoning of getting into this trade? Or what's your criteria, right? I want to know what is your risk management criteria? I want to know all of that because it really will help you think thoroughly through the setup and you get in the habit of training your mind and your eyes on what a high probability setup is and when it appears in your favor. You want to be confidently ready to press that buy sell button, right? Not thinking about it, hesitating, all of a sudden you're fear, you're in fear. You you don't want to trade that way. But in order to be in that position, you have to continuously trade. You cannot trade once, twice a week and then come back, a, you know, a week two later and expect to see consistent results. You have to be consistent in your approach and implementing steps like this. So remember, number 1, you always want to ask yourself, am I getting a great deal at this buy or sell price? If not, wait patiently. Let the price come to you. Number two, you need some type of confirmation or criteria as to why you're entering. So, for example, let's say I'm on this weekly price is at a strong demand. That is a confirmation. Number one for me. Number two, I have to see it wicking at a let's say structure level so a strong reversal area right that could be confirmation number two number three i need to see a candlestick pattern so whether if it's an engulfing pattern right an engulfing pattern on the weekly or on the daily you have to follow very simple rules as to why you're going to get in right maybe i see a hammer you have to have some type of confirmation so when you don't have confirmation you're going to be constantly asking yourself should i enter this trade why did i enter this trade you have to document your outcomes and you got to know what are the three four reasons why you're entering into a trade okay so nzdcad this actually was very profitable for us we got in on this upside right here it came back i actually closed out a few pips in profit when the price came back to retest this level i re-entered again just actually closed out profits today on this I share my profits, share my losses often, so you can see that inside of our Telegram, Instagram, if you follow us. Very transparent. I have nothing to hide. I have nothing to sell, although we have a course, but I'm very profitable as a trader, and I've gone through a lot of pain and lessons and just things that uh, have really got me to where I am now. So I'm very open about that and happy and glad to share it. So number three, the third thing that you want to do or already have in place before you actually enter the market is have a risk management plan. Where a lot of traders go wrong is that they don't have a risk management plan, or if they do have one, they are not yet consistently following it. They have not mastered trading psychology and also discipline. So what you have to do is you're going to have to find a risk management strategy that works for you. So for example, let me just kind of tell you how I trade supply and demand and how I work out my risk. Now I'm not gonna go deep into that because what I do, I'm not saying you have to do it. I'm just sharing our approach and what has worked for us over the years in hopes that you can take some of these ideas and implement it into your own trading, all right? So when I trade very strong supply and demand levels, first of all, I have a percent rule where I do not risk more than a certain percentage of my total account balance. When I'm swing trading versus scalping, my risk looks a little bit different. When I'm scalping and also uh, mainly scalping, I use a 50 pip emergency stop loss. I have a very strategic way in how I implement that. When I am swing trading, overall, whether I'm scalping or swing trading, I use no more than a 2% risk rule on my total account. So you have to decide what is that number? What's that magic number you're going to use if the market goes against you? Number one, is it going to be a percent? Is it going to be a dollar amount? Some people are a little more conservative. I'm a very conservative trader. Although I trade a large account, I'm very conservative. Some people are very risky, right? Whatever works for you, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I can only tell you what has made me successful. But you have got to get a grip on risk management or it will be your number one downfall that will keep you from being successful, all right? So if I were trading NZDCAD and I have a very specific amount, let's say I have $50,000 in my account, and I'm going to risk 2% of that. Okay, so let's just go to a calculator really quickly. I'm going to go to earnforex.com. This is just a calculator that we can use, a position calculator. You want to make sure you calculate your risk every single day. So this is how I do it. If I have a $50,000 account, so $50,000, I'm not going to risk more than 2%. And I'm just gonna put 100 pips stop loss. That's not really what I'm following. What I care about is not risking more than 2% of my total account. This includes open trades. That means on a $50,000 account, I'm not losing more than $1,000 of all my open trades. 
And this $10 lot size is the most that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna take this $10, I'm gonna use it very wisely in the market, and then I'm gonna go and execute. Simple as that, right? And all I don't worry about how much money I'm gonna make, I simply stick to the trading plan. So you have to have a risk plan, okay? Whether if I do, let's say a dollar lot size here and I still have $9 to play with, What's my overall stop loss gonna be? Well, it's gonna be centered around these numbers. And this is what we teach our students, a lot of practice on this because this, in my opinion, is one of the most important actually for your success, all right? So you take that and you strategically apply it and wherever you put your stop loss, whether if it's 100 pips away from here or you're gonna enter a second position 100 pips away, you need to be disciplined and consistent in that and stick to it, all right? So let's just recap really quickly. Now, this is just really, I wanted to do a quick video on this because it's really that simple. Trading is not hard. What is hard, I think, for a lot of traders is being disciplined and consistent when it comes to risk management. That was my downfall and I see it with a lot of other traders. So until you tackle that, you're gonna continue to struggle. You gotta get good mentorship, quality education, and you need to trade and learn and learn from your mistakes and keep going. So remember, three steps to buy and sell successfully in the market. Number one, you want to always ask yourself, am I getting a great deal? Do not be in a rush, do not chase price. Let the price come to you. Number two, what is your confirmation? What criteria do you have in place that you will execute consistently that has proven to you through historical data that those rules or confirmations work? And number three, what is your risk management plan before you get into the trade? Not after, but before you get into the trade. Follow those three steps, guys. Implement that with your system, and I have no doubt that you will improve your trading outcomes. I hope this was helpful for you. Just three simple steps on how to buy and sell into the market. Of course, it takes a lot more than that. However, these three simple steps can help you improve dramatically. I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also, join our Telegram below, and information on our Academy is also linked. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.